Now, how do you diagnose FGR in AGA? Of course, the tools are the same, like we said with early onset FGR in, in SGA babies as well. Now, the tools are, of course, the, the uh, growth charts. As we said, the growth charts become much, much more relevant here because, as I said, the criteria of falling centiles is very well made out in this growth chart. And this growth chart, as I said, if you extrapolate this, this will eff effectively end up being less than 10 centile sooner rather than later. So, the growth chart becomes a very important tool in diagnosing uh, S, uh, FGR and AGA babies because that growth chart will tell you about the falling growth pattern. Otherwise, you would, if you see this as one point and you're not plotted a growth chart, you would still say that this baby is normal because it's weighing about the 10 centile. But the moment you plot the growth chart of the previous chart or the previous scans, this tells you that there is a falling trend from, as I said, in the 80th centile to the 15th centile. So that's around 65 centiles uh, drop, which is more than two quartiles of 50 centiles. Therefore, this baby definitely is to be screened for other signs of growth restriction, where, of course, you will switch on Dopplers and look at umbilical arteries, MCAs and CPRs and uterines and so on and so forth to see if it fits any of those four or five criteria for growth restriction that we spoke about in terms of Doppler changes. Now, when you talk of Doppler in early onset FGR, in FGR in small for gestation age babies, we said the umbilical artery is going to be abnormal in a lot of these cases. But in appropriately grown fetuses, it is much more a reliable, uh, the, the much more reliable tool is the MC or the CPR because here the fetal hypoxia is much more evident than the smallness. So, smallness will not be a criteria here. The baby might be appropriately growing. It might be showing a fall in centile, but still within the 10 centile range. So, smallness may not be a criteria, but what is going to be more evident in these late babies because the late late onset of these problems or, or bigger the babies are, their demands for oxygen are much higher. Therefore, slightest of hypoxia would produce significant consequences in these babies. So, fetal hypoxia will be much more evident than smallness in this group of AGA FGR babies. And uh, therefore, you would use Doppler, especially MCA and CPR changes in conjunction with the growth trajectory that was plotted on the growth chart. And if you combine both, you get a very clear idea. Fall in growth velocity with an abnormal CPR would be your diagnostic criteria for FGR in AGA. Remember in SGA we said a small baby with either an abnormal umbilical artery or MCA CPR uterine being abnormal or the estimated fetal weight itself being less than the third centile would be, would be classified as growth restricted. Whereas in an AGA baby, if it shows a fall in centiles of more than 50 centiles across growth scans in, in the growth chart, combined with an abnormality in the CPR, which tells you that the brain, the baby is trying to compensate it would not compensate if there's no hypoxia. So, if it is compensating, it tells you that there is some amount of hypoxia. So, a fall in centiles with MCR, MCA or CPR abnormality would be your diagnostic criteria for FGR in an appropriately grown for gestation age fetus. So, you broadly classify fetuses as SGA or AGA. In SGA babies, 20% we said are constitutionally small, 80% are growth restricted, of which we said some a, portion, a small portion is intrinsic, whereas a larger portion is extrinsic or placental insufficiency related fetal growth restriction. Uh, in extrinsic, of course, you have early onset FGR if it's below 32 weeks onset and late onset FGR if it's above 32 weeks onset. In early onset FGR, we said typically the umbilical artery abnormality would be present, but in late onset FGR, the umbilical artery Doppler could be normal but the other signs of uh, abnormal Dopplers could be there in that subgroup. On the other hand, you have appropriately grown for gestational age fetuses. Majority of them would be showing a normal growth trajectory, but a small subgroup would still be growth restricted because they, they're not growing as per their desired potential. There is a fall in growth and that is seen in conjunction with abnormalities in cerebral blood flow, which is the first sign of fatal hypoxia. So, FGR babies, the largest subset is mostly late onset FGR. It's very, very unlikely that you have an early onset FGR in an appropriately grown baby because in early onset FGR, we need to understand that the placental disease is very, very severe. And that's why the baby started to grow restricted very early on. So, therefore, in such cases, obviously, a large share of the placenta would be abnormal and therefore, more than 30% of the placenta being abnormal, we know, would produce an abnormality in the umbilical artery Doppler. But in AGA baby, what it implies is the placenta is not so bad, but there's still some amount of placenta is not doing good. So, maybe the umbilical artery could be normal. Uh, the, the onset of FGA would be late in such cases and you would have to rely heavily on the other criteria like a fallen growth centile or even the other Dopplers of CPR, MCA trine arteries or the, the weight being less than the third centile group, which is which is unlikely because you're talking about a 
AGA group. So in AGA group, FGR would be abnormal for in growth centiles of more than 50 centiles plus an abnormal Doppler in terms of CPR or MCA being the most significant criteria. So remember the 10 commandments, we, we saw the definition, we spoke about the concept of fetal smallness, we spoke about growth charts and, and uh, the controversy regarding which one is best. We said it's best to use one that's like locally validated in your population. We saw the problems of the baby being small. We said there's a higher chances of complication just because it is small. We understood the difference between SGA or a constitutional SGA versus true FGR. We also spoke about the concepts of early and late onset FGR and how the Barcelona group came out with this understanding that there is a concept of late onset FGR where the umbilical artery Doppler could be normal and therefore you have to rely on other Doppler parameters to make a diagnosis. We also looked at individual Dopplers last time and now we spoke about the concept of FGR in AGA babies where typically the growth may not be below the 10 centile but it would show a foreign growth and that would be clubbed with an abnormality that tells you that the fetus is hypoxic and the best criteria for that would be to look at the CPR because that's what as we said in the last lecture correlates very well with fetal hypoxia. Now that we have understood so much, we will look at diagnose. We also briefly spoke about how to diagnose FGR in SGA versus AGA. In FGR, in SGA group, the predominant uh, diagnostic tool would be your Dopplers, not just the umbilical artery, but sometimes even the other Dopplers. But in the AGA group, your criteria would be equally dependent on the growth centiles because you need to see a foreign growth centiles along with the Doppler. So both these tools will have to be used in conjunction with each other. Having said that, even in the SGA, FGR group, we said there could still be the use of growth, char growth charts because as we showed, showed the comparison between constitutionally small baby, which maintains its interval growth versus a growth restricted baby, which would show a fallen growth in the growth chart. So that is also significant in FGR uh, uh, in the SGA group. So in both cases, your tools are the same, growth charts and Dopplers. In SGA, FGR, it's mostly growth, less reliant on growth charts and more reliant on Dopplers, but particularly the umbilical artery Doppler, if not the other four parameters. In late onset FGR, heavily rely on growth centiles charts as well as on MCA CPR and not so much on the umbilical artery because the umbilical artery could still be normal in a lot of these term or AGA FGRs or even in the late onset FGR group. So these are all independent groups you need to understand. We spoke about four different criteria, four different groups. Early onset FGR, late onset FGR is one kind of classification. The other kind of classification is FGR and SGA babies versus FGR and AGA babies. These are linked but independent distinct concepts that we need to understand. <laughs>